Hiya Ron. This one's for you buddy. I suggested a couple of weeks, couple of weeks ago that you get some of this um, Mr. Carter Leveling Thinners and I can see you've got yourself some. It really is awesome compared to the Tamiya Thinners it is so much better. It's more smelly and it's probably more hazardous but it is just fantastic stuff when used properly. Um, as I've said in your video I've watched tonight, you could clean your airbrush with it. I find it to be much better than any airbrush cleaner, although I don't use an ultrasonic tank. Um, one thing I will say, I have worked with ultrasonics in my last employment, um, both with solvents and with aqueous chemicals. And basically, ultrasonics will only work if you've got space around the part so if you've got a load of parts all bunched together the ultrasonics will struggle to get in the middle of them and like your issue with the nozzle if you could stand the nozzle on end so if you can imagine if this is your nozzle if you lay it down the ultrasonic transducers are generally generally working from the bottom so they're not kind of agitating in the middle of the nozzle particularly where it's going to be very difficult at the small end so if you can somehow I don't know put it in a lump of plasticine or something or hold it vertical so the ultrasonic waves can go th up through it up along its length it will probably clean it out um, but it depends how good the ultrasonics are and the frequency they're running at um, personally I don't have an ultrasonic cleaner ask yourself why and as a time served aerospace engineer who's in my last employment with as a dental manufacturer working with ultrasonic cleaners you may ask yourself why I don't bother with them um, I, I don't really rate them I think to clean stuff you need a solvent you need agitation and you need temperature uh, to, to clean anything so basically there you go um, the, the ultrasonics will give you the agitation, but the trouble is the tiny little units like you're using, they're, in my opinion, they're not amazing. I know I'm going to get a, a slather of bloody people saying, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, it's just my personal choice. I, I don't think they, they work as good as a, a... I mean, I clean my nozzles with a paintbrush. I just get a paintbrush, a very fine paintbrush, soaked in thinners, down inside, give it a turn. The other thing you can do is get a cocktail stick, slice it down the end... So you end up with just a slither of wood and just go in there with that and use that. And I know there's going to be people, oh my God, you shouldn't touch the nozzle with anything. Oh, they're, they're not that delicate. So um, anyway, I mean, the other thing is I was going to say, putting your nozzle in the bottom of an ultrasonic tank and having it all vibrating amongst the other parts is probably not a good thing either. Um, but anyway, I digress. This video is for Ron. Basically, it's for you, Ron. I know you're watching. Um... I can see you constantly have this issue with the graininess on your paint and the fact that your paint doesn't seem to stick that well. And I noticed on the deck of your hood, it's obviously sticking very well because you didn't have any lifting off at all with the masking tape, so that was great. Uh, but the problem you will get, if you've got that graininess on the finish, the masking tape won't stick down very well. Um, it, it's kind of like, it, it, instead of having a flat, you know, flat surface to go on, it, it, it's got this kind of grainy finish which is basically like loads of pins sticking up so it hasn't got much much surface area to stick to so that's why you might get issues with masking tape lifting and stuff and you know I noticed you had to keep pushing it down and generally with Tamiya tape you shouldn't have to do that so to get rid of the graininess you need to be wetter painting wetter I think and you need to be getting a little bit closer to the model but I think your biggest problem is your mix now I noticed tonight you used 30% uh, thinners so I'm going to do a video now and show you the difference in 30% thinners, 50% thinners and 70% thinners. And then we'll look at the finished job afterwards. Um, and I think you'll be quite amazed. So I think your technique is absolutely fine. I just think you need to get a little bit closer and paint a little bit wetter with thinner paint. So that's why I'm doing this video for you, rather than just keep commenting on the bottom of your videos. Why don't you try this? Why don't you try this? Why don't you try this? Oh, the other thing I haven't done in this video, because I'm filming this after I've actually done the practical bit. The other thing I haven't done is shown you. In fact, yes, I will. I will show you that. I will show you how to level out your paint just using this Mr. Color Leveling Thinners. You can spray it onto your paint neat and it will flatten it out. So uh, let's get to the bench. OK, so... 
just to sort of show you first of all what I think where where I think Ron is going wrong and as I say this is not any dig at Ron or whatsoever this is because I know that Ron takes this in you you you, you explain so much to Ron he takes it in he tries it and he learns from it and it's it's great because so many people are out there these days who just know it alls and know everything so basically just like Ron does I'm going to use some scales these are my dirty old scales I use for weighing weighing out small amounts of resin which is why they're so um cruddy looking so i've got my um scale set there and we got them set at zero so that we know the cup is two and a half grams so what i'm going to do is take some paint and i want basically about 0.7 grams of paint don't make me go in again Here we go, it's 0.7 grams of paint. Okay, so this is Ron's 30% mix. And I'm going to use the Mr. Color Lovely Thinners because that's what he's got now on my advice. And it's bloody awesome stuff. Okay, and we're going to make that up to one gram. There we go. And then we can just use our brush, give that a mix, and get it in the airbrush. Just before I put this in the airbrush, you can see something here. It's it's too thick. Basically, if you pull the paint up the side of the clear cup, what you should get is it running away and leaving a, a, a translucent trace of where it was. And you can see here, it's it's you know it's almost it, it's just too thick. So if we just put this in the airbrush and then spray it. So I'm just going to check my flow and the flow is good. So as I say, 22 PSI. So if I go in nice and close on here and I paint this on here, and I paint it wet. Okay, you can see I get a fairly decent finish because I'm painting it wet. But you can also see that it's quite grainy okay and there's a lot of rubbish underneath this paint so ignore what shapes you see going on but it's also quite grainy so I'm going to do this now over this whole area and what I'm doing I'm painting it quite dry okay now this is what I think Ron is doing so the next segment here I think is what Ron's doing Okay, now people have told him he should be using two or three coats and not one coat, and I kind of disagree. Okay, now this is one of the problems with Tamiya paint. You won't find this if you use Mr. Color. I don't think you find it if you use Viejo, but you will get this grainy finish. So that's on there now. That's been on there for, I don't know, 20 seconds, hasn't it? So I'll come on with another fine coat now, and I'm going to lay off, just like Ron does. Okay, coming back laying off and I'm going to put on another coat just like that right job done okay so we can leave that now and let that dry okay just to keep this scientific so you know exactly what's going on there's the wing there I have just laid a heavy coat on here next to what I think Ron is doing okay so that's that's still wet that's dry okay now I've got another this is the XF67 it's a new bottle and this is an old bottle and I'm pouring the paint that I'm mixing up I'm pouring back in there okay a lot of people go oh my god you shouldn't be doing that I always do I always pour my paint back in the jar I'm using thinners that is compatible with the paint so I pour it back in the jar it doesn't really matter and nine times out of ten I'll mix the paint up in the jar anyway and the other thing I do which people hate is mix the paint in the mixing cup which uh, gets people's backs up but never mind so we're gonna put all that paint in there Okay, so that's gone away. We can put the lid back on that one. And we'll put that one over there. And we'll keep the one we're going to use here. So it's in shot. Okay. Now that little cup, I don't want to waste it. So I'm going to clean it out. And the other thing I'm going to do, I've got my little um, stand here. I'm going to blow the airbrush through. Okay, so you can see the paint going down. And you can hear the change of note. So there's no paint left in there. Okay 
got my pipette here, which is just neat paint. It's not had any thinners in it. And I'm just going to basically get some thinners and just put it in the airbrush and just blow it through. Whoops. Just going to put a drop of thinners in there. Work it around with the brush. And believe me, Ron, I know you're watching this because it's for you. This is all you need to do. If you're going from dark grey to light grey, okay, you can put your thinners in the airbrush like that. And then you can blow it through into your cleaner. Okay. And that is that. And then you can put your next colour in, blow it through onto your paper towel. Wait till the proper colour comes through, off you go. Okay, you don't need to be stripping your airbrush every time. In fact, it's not a good idea to strip your airbrush every time you clean it because every time you strip it, you're wearing it a little bit. So this one here, this is an Iwata Revolution BR. This is, it's got to be 10 years old. It's nine or 10 years old now. So basic, I, I can remember what car I was driving when I bought this. Um, and it was a 2010 Mazda MX-5 that I bought new. And I traded it in in 2012 for a Porsche. So I know that I bought this sometime between 2010 and 2012. So it's getting on for 10 years old. Okay. And I remember I went to a model show down in... Um, it was down south somewhere near Torquay. And I bought this, a, a bigger version of the same airbrush, which I've still got hardly used. And an Iwata compressor. And I walked out and a guy said, you lucky bastard. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, so there we go. So we've got our pipette there with painting. Just make sure there's no, I'm going to use the, the dirty old pot. Make sure there's no um, dregs left in there. So we can get rid of that. Okay. And then put the top back on there. We've got our pot there, which is basically... You know, just a tiny bit of paint and thinners left in this, and that's not going to make much difference. So, what we can do now is move along to the next mix. So, I'm going to once again put this on here. Now, there is a tiny drop of paint in there, but for all intents and purposes, I don't think it's going to make much difference. So, I've teared that now, that's a zero, okay. So that's saying minus 2.7. I'll get another one of these cups, an empty one, so we can see just how much paint is in there. And as you can see, it's, it's nothing. OK, that's zero. That's an empty one. That's zero. OK, so the paint that's in there is going to make no difference whatsoever. So if we go again, we take, oh, that's the, that's, that's the clean pot. This is the good one. Yep, this is the new pot. So if we go again and we take some more paint, so if we go a little bit too much there, let's take a drop out. There we go. So we've got one gram of paint. All right, so I'm going to put my pipette over there, put the top back on the paint. And then I'm going to take some thinners, and this time I'm going to make this 50%. So I'm going to go to 1.5. There we go, there's 1.5, okay? So that's 50% thinners, which I think is the minimum you should be using. Oops. Do I put it in there? Do I put it in there? I think 50% is the minimum you should be using, 50-50. Now I... Personally, when I'm modelling, I never measure my paints. I always just do it by eye. And what you're looking for is when you pull it up the sides, it should run down, okay, and leave a clear translucent line behind it. Now, you can see this is probably a little bit too thick. Even though it's 50, sorry, 50-50, 50-50 should be, in fact, I did the last one wrong, didn't I? It should be two grams. There we go. That's a slightly too much there. Okay, so slightly too much thinners, but this is 50-50. So 
we'll see how this looks. So I'll pour that in there. And I'm just going to quickly blow through the airbrush just to make sure it's all clear. Okay, and then we'll come along and I'll spray on here and you will see straight away it goes down a lot finer. You can see we haven't got the graininess. It goes down with a kind of gloss look to it almost. All right, and you can see there it's a lot it's a lot finer you've got a more of a glossy look and you can see it's wetter it's taking longer to dry now this is how I think Ron is painting I think he's too far back and he's not putting enough paint on but even if he does with this 50 50 mix Okay, you can see if you go too thin, you're going to start getting runs and stuff, but 50 50, absolutely fine. Okay, now what you can do as well, if you want to dry it off, just use the air in the airbrush just to dry it off. Okay, and then we'll come back and look at that in a second. After that's dry, okay, and then I'm going to take the rest of this paint and I'm going to pour it into my dirty pot like so and then blow the excess off just like that and give the airbrush a quick blow through Give the airbrush a quick clean, just like we did before. There we go. Right, so now we're going to go crazy the other way. Okay, so I'm going to take my pot here. That's on zero. And this time I'm going to put in point five grams of paint okay point six grams of paint and I'm going to make that up with one point four so this is going to be 0.6. If I put, if I made it up to one, it would be 60, 40. So it'd be 60%, 40% thinners. So if I go up to, um, if I want to make it 50, 50, I would have to make it 1.2. So if I make it 1.8, that'll be 60% thinners. In fact, let's just go up to two. There we go, so that's two, so what's that? That's um that's seventy percent paint, isn't it? Seventy percent paint, thirty percent sorry, seventy percent paint thinners, thirty percent paint. And you can see here we've got a very thin mix, and when I brush it up the sides, you can see how quick it runs off. Let's find a bit there where there is no see how quick it runs off? Right now. I hope you're still watching wrong because this will blow you away. Right, I'm going to check my airbrush is clear out. Okay, there's nothing in the airbrush now, so I'm not cheating. So I can pour some of this in there. Okay, so remember this is 70% thinner, 30% paint. Just going to blow it through, check it's all clear. And then on here, come down. Now this is what you like to do, you like to spray lightly, laying back, and you want to put on more than one or two coats. Look at that. Remember this is 22 PSI, and you can see how beautifully this paint is going down. And it's building up, it's not all running away. 
and look at the finish we've got on there. Now, if I wanted to go crazy, this would happen. And obviously you don't want that. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe that away. You just need to spray it on lightly. If you're doing your decks and everything and you wanna get more than one coat, I mean, you can, if you're on a flat deck, you can go down quite heavily. Look, you can get it so it's laying down. And if you get a gloss on it like that when you're spraying, you can pretty much guarantee that you will get a flat finish without all that graininess. Okay. And you can see there, it's gone down lovely and flat. All right. So we're going to let those dry. Let all of those dry. I'm going to give the airbrush a good clean. And then we'll uh, come back and have a look at them. Okay, so we've got our wing painted and it's been sat in and it's been drying for about only about 10 minutes. You can see on the back here, this is still a bit tacky where it's thick. But um, basically, this is the 30% thinners, this is the 50% and this is the 70%. Listen. Hear that? You can hear this one is the most grainy. Now I don't have a macro filter like Ron does, but if I can get this close enough and get it to focus, you may be able to see that this is quite grainy. I don't think we can because I don't have the macro filters, but it is quite grainy. Okay, and the fact that you're having the paint scratching off easily, Ron, is because if it's grainy, that means the paint is coming out of the airbrush and it's drying before it gets on the surface. So rather than going down and leveling out, it's it's going onto the surface as a semi-dry lump of paint. And that's why you get the graininess and that's why it comes off so easy because it hasn't had a chance to level out and stick, okay? Now this is the 50% thinners and it's still very, very slightly grainy, but it's a much, much nicer finish. If I can get it to focus. It's a much, much nicer finish than this one okay and then this one on the end this is the 70 percent thinners and i don't know if you can see but that is totally smooth okay it's it's lovely i mean that's actually a better display if i use the base of my disgusting nail thumb listen to that listen to that okay so I would be going at least 50% thinners, if not 60% thinners, to your paint to get a nice mix. The other thing you have to remember is the temperature. If it's a really, really hot, dry day, try and avoid painting at all, because the paint will always dry out before it hits your model, or thin it back extra and go a little bit closer. Okay, so there we go, that's that. Now I'm going to show you one more trick. My airbrush is all cleaned out here, okay? As you can see, there's still green paint in it because I don't fuss about cleaning it perfectly. And I'm gonna take some Mr. Cutter Leveling Thinners, neat, straight out of the bottle, straight into the airbrush, just like so. And what we can do, if we get grainy paint, we can spray Mr. Cutter Leveling Thinners <clears throat> onto the grainy paint Okay, and then just leave it. Don't touch it. Okay, just leave it. Let it settle down. Now you watch what happens. Okay, so there we go. About 10 minutes later and we can see the thinners is all dried out. And really we need Ron's cameras for this. But I don't know if you can pick this up, but it's smoothed it out. All that graininess. Listen, it's, I mean that one now is, is more noisy. The graininess is gone. It takes it down. So I would say to you, Ron, if you've got areas on your model that you want to get rid of that graininess, if you spray the Mr. Cutter Leveling Thinners on there, you may get a funny reaction and it will start to look like it's wrinkling up or something in a very, very fine way. Just leave it. Don't touch it. It will pull down. This all wrinkled up here. Only on this area here wrinkled up. It's, 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 it's a, a strange thing. If you watch my... Um, R11 tanker build, you'll see on there that the when I sprayed the cab with a heavily thin mixture of thinner um, semi gloss uh, semi gloss varnish, it all wrinkled up and then it all went down. So 
but yeah that that's basically what happens so there you go so basically Ron in a nutshell 30% is not enough 50% thinner as I would say is your minimum and if it's a hot day go 70% or just go 60-70% anyway your paint will go further um, you can afford to be a little more lackadaisical with the paint if you like but like I said in the video when these people are telling you you need to be putting two or three coats on that's if your paint is thin if, if your paint is thick if you've got like 30% thinners as I showed you at the beginning on this part here you need to be putting it on so it's going on wet when we say going on wet it means you can see a wet surface of paint when you finish if you see if you're putting it down and it goes matte if it's a matte paint and it goes matte straight away it's too dry it's too thick the day's too hot you're too far away you're not using enough pressure or too much pressure but basically just go 50 to 70 percent and you won't have any issues at all and if you still get the problem if you move over to mr hobby paints you don't get the graininess with them either so you know um, and just for anybody else watching this if you do get this graininess sometimes if you're spraying like if this is the fuselage here and you're spraying into here okay sometimes you get graininess in this area it's where the paint is bouncing off and then falling back on um, basically the way to do that is have your airbrush like this along the line and spray along the line and then if you still get the graininess go with some mr. color leveling thinners leave it let it level itself out as you can see that has gone from being really grainy to quite smooth and that is the 50 percent is now noisier than that one okay so um thanks for watching guys and hope you enjoyed this ron as i say this is what this was for you so um see you all later happy modeling bye for now